I grew up in post-Soviet Union country and it was pretty messy there in, in like beginning of the 90s. I don't think I really understood as a kid how, how bad it was. You don't know better or anything, so you just live in that world. But for me, it was really gray all the time. So I would say it all began the same like for everyone else. When, when they are kids, they are drawing, they are really artistic. And for me, I just never stopped really. I just carried on drawing and drawing. Pretty much half of my school books are covered with drawings. When I saw some of the cartoons from like America and stuff in, in the cable TV, that kind of blew my mind and it kind of created that, that joy and that uh, something special there is out there. There's like drawings, there's like color out there, there's happy people and stuff. And that's why I started drawing a lot more because I kind of wanted, wanted to create something different than what I see around. I wanted to create kind of happy place for me myself. So after that, in school time, I was getting more and more into skateboarding and more alternative music and more punk music and punk rock as well and even like metal. With all that, my style of drawing and I obviously changed as well. I started to draw a lot more, maybe graffiti art from the skateboarding companies and logos. And with the heavier bands, I started drawing some of their logos and lyrics and some of the artwork I saw on the band member tattoos and I really wanted tattoos on me myself back then. I was 14 at that time and I got my first tattoo. It was on my shoulder, quite small, because I was afraid to get it bigger actually. And then when I turned 18, I straight away, I think after about a week, I went to the studio, got my another tattoo, and then maybe in that year I had maybe four more tattoos. Yeah, they were just, they, they just become too addictive. I just couldn't stop thinking about it since I like woke up in the morning, I was like, damn, I want some tattoos. And at some point, I, I remember I, I took my, my own drawings to the studios to get tattooed. So I was like thinking, well, I do those drawings anyway. Maybe I should try to tattoo them. And then when I was getting tattooed by, by our friend, I asked her, is it really hard to tattoo? Because for me, it was like a kind of cosmic experience. I, I didn't even know what was happening there. And she was like, no, not so hard at all. You just take it and you tattoo. And I was like, damn, maybe I should become a tattoo artist too. I bought a couple of tattoo magazines in the, in the shops and that was pretty much it and I was watching some Miami Ink on the TV as well and that was as close as I could get it back then to tattoos. So it was about 22, I saved up for the tattoo machine and I actually didn't even know what you need to save up for because I didn't have the internet, didn't have anyone to check out. I found somewhere that there was some, some beauty salon or something like that that sells tattoo machines. So I went there and they had like huge catalog of the like kind of tattoo machines what you can order from Germany back then. And I was like flicking and I was like, so what do I need? And she was like, no, you need one pedal, you need this cable, you need this machine, you need that for the needles. I was like, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So I ordered it all and then I needed to wait another maybe two, three months till it like kind of got, got to us or something and I, my mom actually she helped me out with my first machine with because uh, it was quite expensive I think it, I needed like around six hundred dollars back then for to, to get all that kit for me and obviously I, I didn't have a lot of money so my mom as I can remember she even helped me out with a couple of hundred back then and then yeah, then I received a call from them and they're like, oh yeah, we got, you, we got your stuff. And I was like, yes. So I ran to that place, uh, I got that all tattoo kit, I, I came back home and I, we needed to leave like next morning for the festival and I got home in the evening, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll do the tattoo on me. So I was setting up all the stuff. I didn't even know where to plug anything in. I didn't even know where needle goes in. So I had the tube and machine and everything. I was like, how is this even working? How is this even possible? I didn't even put like the elastic band on. So the needle was like wobbling like that. And I was like straight away tuning everything on that machine, opening every single screw and moving everything around and trying to find out how not to, I basically I destroyed all that machine completely. Then later on, my good friend Emil, he came around and he started tattooing a little bit before me as well from home and so he came over, he kind of explained me a little bit where to put like needle and that you need to use that elastic band and stuff. So I kind of set up that machine and we did the tattoo on him. It took me like, I don't know, that was one of his drawings and it took me like five hours or something. I did it all with like small needles around shaders. So yeah, that was the first tattoo I ever did on someone else. 
And that was 2008 when I started doing it. 2008 as well was when the recession came. It, it hit it quite hard in Latvia, so a lot of, lot of people lost their jobs, including myself. So I was still tattooing and I was charging maybe like five or ten for a tattoo. I don't think I was like thinking really it's going that well and I was never thinking that it, it's gonna grow and I'll be like actually good at it, you know. I, I remember I had those uh, magazines still at my home and I was like flicking through them and I was like thinking that's like Photoshop, that's like fake. This is just some god level there and I, I would never ever imagine to tattoo even close to that and somehow I tried to survive with that, but I, I realized that it's just not gonna happen there. So, and then there was one dude, I tattooed him quite a lot. He was hitting me up and he was telling me, would you like to come to England and maybe tattoo me a little bit more? So I was like, okay, cool, I packed all my stuff. I was thinking, I'll just gonna tattoo him a little bit, maybe I'll try to find some job there. If I can, if I can't, I'll just come back and uh, live back in Latvia. So I moved here. I got portfolio together and I was walking around a lot of studios trying to get jobs. I was like asking them, oh, do, do you need like apprentice or I already started tattooing. And actually in, in the place where I moved, that was Darby, I think there was like 11 studios. I went to every single one of them and everyone sent me away. They were like, no, we don't have jobs or they were just telling me, telling me that my portfolio is really bad and I should just basically quit tattooing completely. And, and then there was like studio one to two. And when I walked in, the guy was actually busy tattooing. He was like, come back later, later on. He said that he can't give me a job right now, but if I want to come hang around a couple days a week in the studio and, and learn a little bit more, maybe eventually he will start giving me smaller stuff. So I was like spending there a lot of time just to do like sheets of drawings, like A3 works. And um, I sold some of those flash sheets as well back then. And I got some money as well for living to pay a rent. And that was kind of like my part of my kind of pra practice and apprenticeship as well, because I was helping out in the studio. So that kind of was my first big thing, how, to, how I got into studio. And then I decided to move to London because it was really slow for me there and I, I thought maybe if I move to London, London is a bigger city, there's a lot more alternative people, there's a lot more alternative music and gigs and everything. So I was like thinking maybe if I move there it will be a lot, lot better for me and I'll get a lot more work there and maybe I'll get in the studio. But that was like actually a big mistake and when I moved there it was even worse. I didn't have any money at all and we were staying in a tiny apartment with my friend. Of course, back then I didn't have any phones or GPS or anything, so I was like sitting uh, uh, in nighttime drawing the maps where I need to go for the studios. I was checking around like blocks. I had even saved money for my trains. I had only like maybe five, five the times to go, you know? So I kind of was planning the five spots where I'm gonna go and try to find a job. And if that fails, then that's it. I don't have anything because I don't even have money for the train anymore. But then I found actually one studio that was in Cambridge. It was quite long travel, but I still managed to do that. And I worked there for a couple months. That was like kind of part-time job, not every day, but it kind of still kept me, kept me going there. But I, I really couldn't survive there. And because of that, I, I moved back to Latvia and I tattooed again from home there. But this time I, I bought all the equipment. I bought everything disposal and I was like, basically making like kind of studio setup but at my home and that was what really changed everything i think because i said to my friends i have i'll do this one for free or you or like ridiculously cheap but you'll let me do whatever i want on it and that was like huge size piece you know like like full day sitting like maybe six seven hour work and and so i spent around three months there just doing like friends and friend of friends it was like word of mouth and that really helped me building up my portfolio because i, I actually tattooed the things that i really wanted to do and i actually really pushed my style and really pushed the really pushed the limits of what i can actually do and with that portfolio what i made there from home i think i could find job in like most of those studios what i walked around and never that portfolio i was really confident with myself so i re returned back in england and then a little bit later on i met with my wife and she was like living in liverpool that was pretty much it it was like 
for me in love in the first sight and I was like I just need to move to Liverpool and marry her and stuff because she actually had like daughter and life here but back there in Derby I was still crashing on my friend's house like I had like one room there and I was just living in inside it like with, with nothing I was like sleeping on the floor didn't even have like bed or anything but my wife actually here had like real life so I was like okay I'll just move to Liverpool because Liverpool is a bigger city again I was thinking a lot more opportunities there my portfolio was all right at that time so I was like thinking okay I'll move to Liverpool and we'll try our luck there again I started struggling with my customers no no one knew about me in Liverpool we didn't have a lot, any friends here so that, that was a bit struggle there but because of that and the studio owner Simon he was actually pretty cool because he let me tattoo he was like well if you don't have any bookings just tattoo anyone tattoo your wife tattoo your friends to whatever he doesn't want any money from them and I think that was really what helped me again in, in my tattoo journey was that I can actually tattoo people for free and I can build up my portfolio and that way I kind of found myself a niche in this tattoo industry and I found myself to this style what I'm doing still today. My biggest inspirations in all these years definitely was and, and stayed there music as well still. The music was the reason I started tattooing all the bands and everything and all the alternative life and the music is still really important for me when I do my drawings, when I do my designs because when I do designing and when I do drawing and stuff depending on what I listen I can kind of create atmosphere and so put that emotion in my work what I feel like the music I believe it's like storytelling the same with tattoos I believe and art in any art form actually is like storytelling another inspiration for me of course will be like horror movies and like sci-fi movies any art forms really because uh, my, my style is kind of goes for the horror style but but when I try to do those designs I try to do them more kind of gloom and depressive and kind of mystery and atmospheric kind of vibe to my designs like kind of dark forest or something like that. I worked really hard in the beginning with it and I tried like experimenting with a lot of different uh, styles to kind of try to create this one and somehow all that mixed together all those years of me tattooing all those inspirations all those bad things what happened and like struggles and everything kind of came together and created all this kind of dark trash realism style what I'm known today for and pretty much from that I got a lot busier because everyone kind of started noticing that I'm doing something what you can't really get anywhere else done and they start kind of noticing and people started even traveling from me and some of the people they will travel from other countries from like France and Germany and I was like damn this is crazy like I was like mind blown that people actually travel just to get work done by me and because the customers were starting to travel a lot more for me I kind of didn't feel that space in that studio was quite uh, I would say tourist friendly that's why I decided to move to city center studio and I found this place in Baldas Brasta 2 where I'm still working today so over 10 years of tattooing there's so many big highlights what, what happened to me one of the biggest thing was that I got invited to work at London tattoo convention that, that's like the biggest convention in the world I would say and the most prestige one and and to to work there that's kind of like the big big honor in tattoo world so actually one of my friends said that I was the first Latvian tattoo artist who made it, who worked there in that convention. Another cool thing over these years is that I, I managed to inspire a lot of people like and originally like I, I was the one who needed that inspiration, who needed that help from the tattoo community to kind of to get out there and for Halloween time there was a lot of uh, people who were inspired by my art and they were doing like makeup on them as well like that dark trash realism style with the moon on forehead with a lot of black shading and like scratches over their face and it was like super crazy for me to see actually that people are so inspired by my art that they create their own kind of vision of it and it's, it's amazing that now I can inspire with my art so many people so 10 years of the hard work can definitely take you somewhere and when I first started as well I couldn't really imagine how it will develop and how it will become because I never could have dreamed about this and I never even tried to push this you know I, I think as well that's something what you really need to do you need to put all your time and all your love inside your craft inside anything you want to do and then the world will kind of see it and it will give you back you know 
So I always say to people uh, that there's no talent because everyone always saying oh, you're so talented and your art is amazing and it's inspiring and but I don't think so because if you look all the way back to my 10 years or even like 20 years drawings they're just like really bad you know it, it's uh, I think it's all just hard work and, and devotion and just never stopping and never giving up and if you like work really really hard you, you can make anything possible.